Hello, everybody. God bless you. How are you doing tonight? This is Pastor Mike and Brother Josh here with Church on the Hill down in Harrodsburg, Indiana. And uh, we are here. We meet Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. with worship and word and good, friendly people being friendly and having a good time. But uh, ours is a church, a church that's well at, let me see here. 12 miles south of Bloomington off of Highway 37, you follow the signs around, Miss Google or your phone or whatever, to 9181 South Gore Road. Then when you pull up in front of our church and turn around and look across the street, you'll see that we're right across the street from the The lovely lovely Clover Hill Hill Cemetery. Cemetery. Yes. (laughs) So anyway, uh, we want to invite you to come and see us. Also Wednesday nights, we have youth ministry, kids ministry, and adult Bible study. And uh, God will do some good things for you. We're going to talk to you tonight about how Jesus needs to be your friend. Amen. Isn't that Absolutely. right, brother? Yes. <laughs> that if he's your friend, he can introduce you to God Almighty and, and help you to, to, you know, it's sometimes it's like what you know, it's who you know, right? That's right. Proven time and time again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so if you've got a friend of a friend, <laughs> uh, uh, that Jesus is, is a friend, Amen. And if I'm a friend of his, his and then, then, then uh, I am a friend of God, then the Father of God Almighty will look upon you and me favorably if we love Jesus and honor him and his sacrifice and all that. And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. And so God is good. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to just get into this. Just Well, first of all, how are you doing tonight, Brother Josh? I'm doing great. I'm excited to speak about my favorite topic, King Jesus. Amen. King Jesus. It's not President Jesus, it's not Emperor Jesus, it's King Jesus, King of all creation. Amen? Yes, amen. Amen. And so right now he's seated at the right hand of Almighty God in heaven. And so we're going to talk about that just a little bit uh, tonight. Jesus sits at the right hand of God as our advocate. If you believe in Jesus, if you got Jesus living in your heart, if you invited him to be your Savior, if you said, Lord, I repent of my sins, Jesus, come and live in my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And and you do that, then you're in a position of favor with Almighty God. He sits, sits Jesus does right now, at the hand of Almighty God as our advocate, the one who represents us with favor before God the Creator. He represents me with favor. In other words, when Jesus says to the Father, and of course God knows all things, I'm kind of making a figurative thing about it, but when Jesus says uh, to the Father, Father, let me introduce you to Josh, or let me introduce you to Pastor Mike, and all that, you know, then the truth of the matter is, is because he he says, well, if you're a friend of my son, then you're a friend of of mine, you You know, so that kind of a thing. So we want to honor where he is right now, Jesus Christ, after he was dead and rose from the dead, what back to heaven now he's exalted the bible says some good things about where he is positioned in a way that if you call on god in his name god will hear you he'll bless you and he'll answer prayers and he'll guide you through life so i want to get, look at some definitions brother kind of just uh, slowly go through those definitions if you would please sure of a uh, high priest uh, a pontiff a pontoon bridge <laughs> bridge a connection point between heaven and earth represents us to God, represents God's side to us. That's Jesus. We have mediator, a person whose job is it is to mediate or to talk to two separate people or groups involved in a disagreement to try to help them to agree or find a solution to their problems. In a disagreement or to to talk to the people or groups involved to help them find a solution. Sorry. And an advocate uh, to speak for, support, or represent a person or group of people who may need extra help or protection to speak for or defend someone in a court of law. Yeah, so, you know, there's a, the two different, it's spelled the same way, but it's either advocate or advocate. And your advocate, your advocate will advocate for you. That's right. <laughs> and he'll stand up for you. Friends, God is the righteous, holy judge. And the Bible says we have all sinned and come short of glorious perfection that would entitle us to have relationship with God. So because on my own merit, my own goodness, I'm not entitled to answered prayers or good relationship with the Father. 
I'm not entitled to that because I haven't earned it. Somebody earned it for me. And so God says, if you'll put your faith in my son, his sacrifice, his resurrection, and his lordship over your daily life, if you'll do that, then uh, I will favor you, I will bless you, and I'll be with you wherever you go, and I want to help you. Brother, would you read that first opening group of scriptures there for us out of Hebrews chapter 4? I will, verse 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. He's our high priest, our mediator, our advocate, and he's our representative. You know, I was, when I was typing this up, that brother, I, I happened to think of Psalm 2 that we mentioned before we started doing our video here tonight. Yeah. Psalm 2 where it says, kiss the sun and you'll avoid problems with God. And what's that really mean? What that just really means is make uh, have a good relationship with God through his son. If you love Jesus, honor Jesus, follow Jesus, then, then kissing God's son. The Bible says in one place, God spoke about his son Jesus when he was coming to get baptized. I believe it was when he said, behold, uh, well, John said, behold the Lamb of God. But he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Think about that, friends. That God says, Jesus is my beloved son in, in whom I'm well pleased. So if you love me, you t- let's just say it this way. If you told me, Pastor Mike, I like you, I really love you, but I hate your kids and can't stand them. Guess what? We're not going to have a relationship. Nope. Because my kids mean a lot to me. And uh, I love them a lot. And whether they're perfect or not like Jesus is, I still love them a lot. And but if you if you can't be my friend and then be the enemy of, of anybody else in my family, it's no. not going to work. No. So I'd say this: that if you follow the that thing of repentance and faith and establish relationship with Jesus, God's Son, who went through life, paid a sacrifice, and and came back to life, and 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 is at the right hand of God right now. That if you if you'll have a relationship with Him, you can get in good with the Daddy, with the Father. That's Amen. Right. Amen. It says, "Seeing we have a high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus was the Son of God before He came down to become the Son of Man." In other words, before Jesus was born in that stable in Bethlehem, and they gave Him the name Jesus, He was the eternal Son. In eternity past. Isn't that a mystery, brother? <laughs> it is. It's, it's difficult to comprehend, but it is. Uh, it is. It, he tells us that in uh, the New Testament when he says, before Abraham was, I am. Um, so he was before he was born in that stable, like you said. <laughs> yeah, and so this is really a good verse here to let you know something. I've heard people say sometimes, I don't think my prayers are getting any higher than the ceiling. In other words, I don't think my prayers are reaching heaven. But right here it says we have a priest, a high priest, a representative to God between us and God who has passed through the heavens. And he's up there right now. So when I call upon the Father in the name of Jesus, then I got somebody who's up there. So if you really pray in faith in, in the name of Jesus, pray to God in the name of Jesus, pray based upon the word of God and things that you find in the Bible, if you'll do that, then you'll, you'll, you've got to confidently know that somebody's up there rooting for you. Somebody's up there saying, yeah, you can listen to this one, Father. He belongs to us. And, of course, the Father already knows that. But this, I'm just kind of saying how Jesus is there for you in the presence of God. Right. And so he passed through the heavens. So next time you feel like your prayers aren't reaching heaven, they're not getting any higher than the room, the ceiling in your room, just say that if Jesus lives in your heart, you know better than that. You know that Jesus is up there having your prayers heard in the heart and the mind, the ears of God. And it says, so because we know we have Jesus in heaven for us, let us hold fast our confession. In other words, our confession of faith. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who lived the perfect life. 
life, who died on that cross to pay for my sins and is risen from the dead, and he's at the right hand of God. Hold on to that confession of faith that yes. God's for me. Who can be against me? Right, on. Hold on to your confession of faith. Why? Because you got somebody up there in heaven who's rooting for you, Amen. who's on your side, yes. and is pulling for you. Oh. It says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And so Jesus was tempted, just like you and I are, to do wrong, to compromise, but Jesus never gave into that compromise. And so he's without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, I can come boldly to God. And yes. say, I, it's funny, you can be bold and humble at the same time. Because <laughs> you have to have reverence toward God. He is God. And yet I can come boldly as if he's welcoming me. As if I do have a privilege of access to heaven. So brother, doesn't that give you more confidence in your prayers when you know that there's somebody up there who never sinned who's pulling for you? Yes, it does. <laughs> it's, a, it's such a wonderful feeling. Under, and to know that he knows what it's like to ache. He, he knows what it's like to be betrayed and things that, that we all go through, that he understands and that those things affect his, you know, affect his heart. He, he feels those things. Touched by the feeling of our infirmities, yeah. King James says. Exactly. And, and to know that he cares that much for us and, and to know that he is, you know, going to, uh, uh, to put it in a layman's terms, to put in a good word for us uh, to our Heavenly Father is, is such a blessing. And if you ever, if, if you ever go into a place where, where it's a, a new location to you, a new environment, and somebody says, uh, looks at you and says, I don't know you, who are you, who are you? And then somebody else steps up who's in a, good, a member in good standing and says, it's okay, he's with me. <laughs> when we approach God, Jesus says, it's okay, Father, he's with me. He's with me, that's right. And I'm with him. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing to know, isn't it? Praise Man, God. Yes. So that we may obtain mercy and we can find grace to help us in our time of need. Because Jesus, the sinless Son of God, is at the right hand of God, uh, is an advocate for you and for me. Praise God, because of that, then when I have a time of need, I can find his mercy and I can find his grace to help me. You can find his grace and mercy to help you in your time of need yeah. if you come to the Father uh, on, the, on the merits of Jesus Christ, his wonderful Son. Amen. So, because we have on our side the one who left heaven to come rescue us, he died for us, he paid the price to fix everything that's broken, the one who, after he overcame death for us, went back to heaven, to the throne room of God, to represent us with favor, so then, let us hold fast our confession of faith. He is touched with whatever touches us. The feeling of our infirmities tempted as we are tempted, and yet he resisted sin. He didn't yield. He overcame. And because he went through what you and I go through and face in our temptations and in our trials in life, he went through many of the same things because of that, and yet he overcame then he's to a position of victory that if I'm in him and I'm believing in him and he's in my heart, then I'm also in a position of victory Amen. in yes. Jesus, my Savior for, forever. Amen. So, since we stand before God in the same good standing and favor that Jesus has achieved, then we can be bold in our approach to yes. God, confident that because of Jesus, God will hear our prayers and help us. Isn't that a wonderful thing, that brother? Is wonderful. And it's because of Jesus. That is, it has nothing to do with us. It is all because of Jesus. And Amen. That is, that's wonderful. Wow. Would you read that next scripture, please? I will. Hebrews 7, 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Well, so we've got 24-hour access to God. Through Jesus. He ever lives. He saves to the uttermost. He, he, he can save to the uttermost. Complete forgiveness and complete deliverance and, and completely reversing the curse that came upon humanity because of sin. You know, and part of the curse is disease and sickness and poverty and, and, you know, and all kinds of painful things in life. That doesn't mean that if you are a Christian, you'll, uh, you'll escape all the challenges of life. But what it does mean is that when the challenges of life come your way, you will overcome them. 
And because you've been forgiven, you've been delivered, and God sees you as his favored child because you're in Christ, his most favored child, that he said, behold, he said, I'm well pleased in him. So, brother, isn't it good to know that he ever lived? That means another thing, he's, a, he's, a, he's alive forever. Yes. Jesus didn't just die on the cross and he went away. He, there's, not a, there's not a bunch of old rotten bones in some grave over there oh. that well, used to belong to Jesus. Oh, he he came back and got that body three days later, and he's alive forevermore. Evermore. So, in other words, the one that's for you that's up there is never going to go off the job. He doesn't take a vacation. That's he right. doesn't have a night off. He doesn't have a bad day where he has to, that can't come into the, can't, his boss can't come into the office today. He's always there for you. Praise Amen. God. All the time. He yes. ever lives to be on your side as an advocate for you Amen. in the presence of God. Isn't that Glory exciting, God. brother? Wow. Amen. Praise so, God. would you also then read verse, uh, the next one? Yeah, well, it's chapter 8, verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Yeah, you know, I, I've heard some people say that, well, when God promised Israel in the Old Testament that he was going to take away disease and he, he would remove the curse from them and things like that, they said, well, that was Israel. That's, that's the Old Testament. Well, but, you know, if this says that Jesus is the mediator, the priest, the connect and our oh. connection with, with, with heaven on a better covenant made oh, out of yes. better promises, then yes. I don't think I'm going to get any less than they got. Oh, that we're, friends, there's a difference in New Testament faith in the, in the death and resurrection of Christ and a relationship and a covenant and promises and a relationship we can have with God through Christ than it was before. Before it was something else. Now it's more complete. So he, he, he obtained a more excellent ministry than what? Than the Old Testament priesthood. The theme of the book of Hebrews is that Jesus is better. He's better than the Old Testament priests. He's better than angels. He's better than uh, the, uh, the Old Testament prophets. He's better. He's higher above all those things. So that's why it says he obtained a more excellent ministry than what? The Old Testament priests. Because he's a mediator. He's the go-between, the bridge to heaven on a better covenant based on better promises. More excellent, better than the Old Testament priest. His blood and his sacrifice negotiated a better deal for us. Yeah, Amen. A better contract with us for with with uh, for us with God. Whatever I meant. To say. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's, well, I guess we'll keep moving on, and I'll let you step in here in just a minute, brother. Would you like to read the next uh, scripture there? Yeah, we're in First uh, John chapter one eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Wow. So everybody has sinned, and if you say you haven't, then that means uh, you're, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> Sinning again. Yeah, you know, and uh, some people are don't want to face up to the fact that oh no, I don't need anybody to save me. I'm I'm not a bad person. Well, you know what? You don't have to be the worst person in the world to need a savior. You nice. could be almost perfect and still need a savior because you're not quite perfect. You know, and Jesus is the one that was totally perfect. Right. And so here. Uh, we got to say, I need a Savior. I need somebody to cleanse me from my sin, to make me right in the eyes of God. And then what's it go on to say there in that next couple of verses, brother? Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Wow. Well, you know, that's the reason why I thought of that verse, brother, is because it has the word advocate with it. There you go. It says, uh, I don't want you to sin me, because previously it was talking about you got to admit that you've got sin or you're not being honest with yourself or with God. And then it goes into the next chapter, picks up right with that thought, and, and say, 
it says there that, uh, but, but I'm going to give you help. You don't have to sin. You don't have to be trapped in sinful behavior right. or a slave to sinful, uh, ungodly, destructive tendencies, old habits, bad behavior that seems to just have had a grip on you that makes you always do a lot of self-defeating activities and actions and attitudes. <laughs> you don't have to be trapped in that because you have an advocate with the Father, Amen. Jesus yes. Christ, right. the right, the the righteous one. Yes. He's the one that if you look at him, you say, oh, that's what perfection looks like. Look at Jesus. Oh, that's what perfection looks like. All right. So therefore, uh, because we know that, then in that word propitiation, that's a nice long theological term, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. And what it, really, yeah, what it really means is he's the complete payment or a payment in full. So that means that... Uh, <clears throat> You know, I, I knew there's one religion that I kind of call a cult. Some people call it a cult. And it's sort of like Christianity, but it's got some things about it that are just not right. And, and one of the things that, uh, one of the teachings is that some of your sins are so bad that the blood of Christ wasn't enough to take care of it. And it gives that person in that group <laughs> uh, an excuse to harm you. Uh, we don't, I don't think that they do that anymore. But as far as, uh, as, far as that goes, uh, uh, the blood of Christ, Jesus, when he paid, he paid it all. You know, when, brother, when he hung his head on the cross, it says, it is finished. What did he mean? He, he, he meant he completed the job. He did the job. He fully paid for everything. He fully made, uh, made it to where you and I can be right with God and have all the privilege and all the access that we want to have as children of God. Amen? Yeah, amen. There it is. Say something about that. <laughs> we got four minutes. Left. That's, uh, that's so good. That's you know that's what he did. That's the completeness of it. He traded it off for us. So you know, any time that God looks at us, He sees His Son now because of what He did on the cross for us. As, as if we accept Him as our Savior and have faith in Him. Isn't that good, brother? I it's mean, so good. has there ever been? I mean, there's we probably all of us at times that after we come to the Lord, we know times. When we thought, man, I wish I hadn't disappointed the Lord. I wish I'd done better. Man, I messed up. And feel kind of bad about it. And the good thing is that if we admit it and repent of it, he'll just make you as clean as if you never made a mistake. Right. Amen. There's no condemnation in Christ. Amen. Because we've all sinned against God, we all need someone who has not sinned against God to come to our defense. One definition of an advocate is a lawyer. Jesus is our defense attorney who cannot only cleanse us from sin's contamination, but also settled that offense that's between us and God. That there's no enmity. There's the Bible talks about our flesh is enmity against God. In other words, things about our natural, worldly, uh, physical lifestyle, appetites, and drives sometimes push us away from God and, and are contrary to God. But that we can repent of that and give, get the Holy Spirit living on the inside. You can't, I'm going to say this, it's impossible for you to live the Christian life. But it's not impossible to live the Christian life if God's living that life through you. Right. If Jesus is in you, living his life through you. So that's why we say, Jesus, live your life through me. Shine your light through me. Oh, Jesus, let the world see you and not me. And these things that we say that we really love the Lord. Brother, read that last verse before we run out of time here. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. Amen. When we bring our needs to God the Father, in the name of Jesus, God is prone to answer those prayers with a big yes. Amen. Because of God's total favor on his son, the Lord Jesus. Well, brother, I'm going to let you make a comment here for a moment. We're going to get ready to run out of time, but it's been good to be with the folks. And you make, your, make a little comment, and then we'll, I'll wrap it up. All right. Um, this is, this is the key. This is, this is what the guy that we pray to is, is our King Jesus. He's our mediator. He's, he's our go-between. He's, he's the one that died for us. And he's the one that, you know, we pray through. We, and it's so amazing. And it's, it can be overcomplicated, but really it's really, really simple is when we ask the father in Jesus name. It, Amen. We ask the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and 
he answers. He, 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 it says so right here. It's Jesus speaking. And Amen. It so, and it's, it, gets, it, it's, it doesn't get any simpler than that, but Amen. we can overcomplicate things. Amen. Well, friends, I'm so glad that you two didn't watch us to, to this tonight, tonight or tomorrow, whenever. <laughs> we, you can watch it at any time. <clears throat> but this is Pastor Mike. And Brother Josh, God bless you, brother. We appreciate you so much. You sharing these, uh, hosting of these programs with us from Church on the Hill down in Harrodsburg, Indiana. And we appreciate the camera crew back there and everybody that's helping us to get this word out. And when friends that are watching us on Facebook, and I'll put this on other platforms, thank you for watching. We want you to know we love you. God bless you. Church on the Hill is 12 miles south of, of, uh, Bloomington, Indiana off of Highway 37 at 9181 South Gore Road. Sunday mornings at 10.30, Wednesday nights at 6.30. Come see us. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.